So, Normaliser Martin, Hello. I've I've gathered you together for one of our occasional summit meetings. I kind of last talked with you a couple of years ago about that idea of of, of what well, you know the new genres that were splitting off from folk, the new folks mm. and the freak folks, and we discussed what impact that had had on on where you were and what you were doing. If it was a kind of moment where you just felt a series of gimmicks and fads were throwing mm. a light on folk, but it would all go away and you'd be carrying on as normal. So I just wondered if, if what kind of impact it has had, the fact that we talk about folk in a slightly different way now, but whether we're still talking about the folk that you believe in or or a, a thing that made it trendy for a moment. Uh, I think the new acoustic sort of new folk scene is is really thriving. I think it's doing mm. very well. There are, you know, there are festivals specifically for that kind of thing springing up all over the place. Uh, you know, Radio 1 DJs like Rob DeBank and people mm -hmm. like that are actually starting festivals up. If you listen to Radio 1, now after all the techno stops, there's, there's, um, Rob DeBank has his little campfire show and all that kind of stuff. And uh, and that's that's fine. I think that's uh, it's really good. It's it, I mean, it is still pretty much just acoustic singer-songwriting as far as yes, I see it. I mean, yes. it's, it's certainly on the artier end of the spectrum, you know, it's mm. people who make their own clothes and, that, and probably make their own merch as well, you know, that kind of thing. I think it's tokenistic, I think mm. things go in cycles and, and, uh, and I think, you know, this, this, one's, this one's possibly at its peak. I, I don't yeah. know, I don't want to do it down. No, sure. Because sure. I, like I like seeing different yes. music in the media and we do actually have that at the moment. Yes, because I was thinking about it, you must have seen it come and go many, many times since not as many times as as as, uh, as you'd think because right. there was that huge gap in the 70s people were really really indulging i can remember doing a club a particular club summer i don't remember where it was but um i had a bit of credibility outside the folk scene so there were people coming to see me and this club sat in a circle facing inwards yes <laughs> And oh I always remember I, I was sitting there waiting to go, waiting to do my, my half an hour. And the door opened and these two, two young kids came in. This amazing hair, sort of blue flashes in the hair. And they came in and they were singing um, uh, Pack Up Your Troubles in Your Old Kit Bag, which is a white feather song. Um, <laughs> they, they looked at each other and they went... Quietly, and they crept out of the door, and they shut the door really, really quietly, and you heard this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I, I remember thinking, <laughs> there goes, you know, there's yeah, another the next opportunity. Generation. Yeah, and that, yeah. And for, so you had for, oh God, I mean, 10, 15 years. Yes. Well, why do you think there is this this thing that I think is is dissolving to an extent, but that cultural approach to the word folk that it was. A, a kind of depressing word, a dirty word, if you like, from the mainstream. That somehow it, it was, it was about it history, was it was about politics. If people said folk, they would sat, sit there and go, oh, mm. you know, and um, which is a really silly thing to do because that it, it's just it's just a tool, and it's not just the folk scene that uses it. Opera singers use it. You know, Pavarotti used it, and uh, various. I mean, there's a, there's a vase in um, the British Museum that's from Persia or something with somebody singing that, that's that got, you know, it, it is a tool, it, it helps you hear yourself better, that's all. Yes, yes, yes. And, um, uh, but, you know, you only had to mention the word foe yeah. and everybody would go, ooh. Yeah. Um, the, that was the time of the punk as well. Yes. And punk scene really was the scene that, uh, um, I, I think, well, it should have been the values. It should have been the values. But it, but it, but it, but it, but it, but it, 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 it wasn't a way because it was very English. Well, that's yeah. exactly. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. the folk scene should have agreed with them. But they we did. Yeah. A lot. yeah, you did. But, but it, yeah, but and you know, a lot of the the clubs didn't. wouldn't. Yeah. You know, you uh, ask Billy Bragg, you know, mm. And, mm. and people like Elvis Costello, yeah. you know, who wanted work at that time. Yeah. The, yeah. Folks, the folk scene wouldn't touch them, which is a real shame. You know, they could not get gigs in the folk scene. Something about folk that. That, that for me celebrates that side of, 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 mm -hmm. of the English and the British that's so important and gets constantly threatened by the commercial world. And it's, it's not just the, the, the working class side, it's not just you know, continuity, mm. it's not just telling us stories about our past that everyone almost seems embarrassed about. There's also the magical side and the mysterious side, yes, I yeah. think is really, really important. The other thing too is you mentioned the working, it is working class music, it is. And don't you think around about the 80s and the, the 70s and the 80s, people in the working class 
they became very confused about what their mm. position in society was. Yes, yes. And also, I guess, a, a, a deepening confusion about what it is to be English as well, yes. I guess. Yes, we started to sing the song Cole Not Dole. Mm. And when we introduce it, I, I always say it's the 25th anniversary of the Minus Fair. Mm. And the gasps in the audience, mm. but people go, <gasps> mm. because they don't realise mm. that it's 25 mm. years since mm. it. Mm. And communities, especially in the North East, communities have totally, totally gone. Can, can I ask you, during those dark ages of folk that we've been talking about, you know, when you were continuing, you know, yeah. you were continuing, you were mm -hmm. doing it, you know, A, did you feel that the tradition was, was, was genuinely being threatened? And, and B, what, what, what kept motivating you to, 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 to stick with it, even in its darkest period? What kept me going was the fact that I was the first person I ever saw doing it, who was this man called Sam Lana, who's 80 years old. There were two people, actually. One of them was Sam Lana, the other one was Walter Pardon because I actually I saw Sam Lander when I was 17 and I was completely blown away by, by his passion. Mm. And when I met Walter Pardon, I was... How old was I? I was, I was in my mid-30s, I suppose, wasn't mm. I? Mm. And I remember watching him sing a song, sitting across a table, and he asked me about a song, uh, about a song I knew, and he said, how do you sing it? And I sang it to him, he said, this is the way I sing it. And he leaned across the table and he started to sing, and as he started to sing the song... Every single hair on his arm stood, stood straight up in the air. And I remember thinking, bloody hell, I hope I feel like that when I'm, when I'm in my mid-60s. And I do. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm in my late oh. 60s now. I feel exactly the same way. Yeah. And what kept me going was the fact that there was always something, there was always something new to find out. Yeah, you know, this, yeah. this, the, 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 you know, <laughs> this is an endless, you know, an, an endless seam. Mm. Absolutely endless <clears throat> scene. You always find another way. There's always somebody else doing uh, doing something in a totally upside down way, yes. and it's something they've thought of out of thin air. Mm. Now, what's interesting now is a lot of things that we thought were certain are also being threatened mm. in the pop world. You know, yes, and yeah. folk, in a way, has been through all these battles before. Yeah. And mm. I'm wondering whether it's, mm. it's it's kind of more suited, in a way. To, to survive yeah, this period of yeah, threat, if, if you're not oddly yeah, enough, yeah, you know, yeah, it because it's is, used to it, right, and it's been yeah. through it before, yeah, and it's yeah. been turned, yeah. and, and here but it like is. Like Kevin Costner, we've grown up. <laughs> 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 we've got all webbed toes. Yeah, we've got all webbed toes. <laughs> well, yeah. well, well, a, a better example than Kevin Costner, but, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's the thing, I was just thinking, if you've, you know, like with Topic surviving 70 years, mm. you feel that Topic's mm. more likely to survive another 70 years than some of the ones that, you know, the more the commercial ones, you know. Topic has to... When, when, uh, when they record anybody, uh, Tony just has to sit down and say, right, am I going to make the money back from this? What am I going to do? Mm. If, um, if it's a traditional singer, like the, you know, the voice of the people that they did, mm. or they're doing another one at the moment of, of more traditional uh, singers and musicians and storytellers and things. Mm. Now, he won't, he won't make a, 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 a mint out of that. But a Martin Simpson record or a June Tabor record or, dare I say it, you know, a record from us, mm -hmm. he'll break even, he will make something out of it, he'll make, you know, make something for it. Yeah. And that has to go to the traditional stuff. You're talking about value in a way, and talking about that idea that you're continually kind of being critical of your own repertoire in a way to, to give it longevity. But I am interested ultimately what you think the value is. Well, for me, the, it, it, a song is like, a traditional song is like, an old piece of furniture, you know. It's been polished. It's been loved. It's been it's been changed. Maybe it's been you know over the years, and and it's there and it's beautiful mm. and it's passed through so many people's mm. hands. Mm. It's a lot. Well, like we said before, it's a miracle that that music has survived, mm. and and I respect the fact that yeah. it has survived. Yeah. It's not just respect for me either. It's enjoyment. I mean. Um, the, I, I, I don't I, I don't have any sentimentality about the the stuff that I don't enjoy. I wouldn't perform it. I wouldn't perform it just because it was there. I would. Mm. I, I you know I I enjoy I enjoy the the the, the genuine poignancy and power of, mm. of of the music that's available, and it mm. is unusual, and it's it's worth it's worth doing for that. Mm. And also. Um, I'm a little bit less concerned about about this now than I was, mm. but in the search for an English identity, I think our old music, the music that we have mm. loved over the years, that our grandparents have loved and their grandparents have loved, actually can't help in the search for a positive English identity. I, I mm. think that's very important. It's still full of surprises. You still kind of come across somebody somewhere 
who has an angle on, on, on a particular song or who has a, 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 a totally different idea, if you like, what constitutes a melody. You know, there's some gypsy yeah. singers who do, who, do, who do that to me. I just sit and I listen to them and I think, mm. where the hell did that come mm. from? Mm. And I sit there and, and I mean, the, 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 the very exciting thing for me is to be able to try and play what they sing. Mm. To actually try and play it and understand the, the, the rhythms and the, you know, it, it, it sounds like an intellectual exercise and it's not. It's, it's, it's all, it's trying to use your intuition, trying to use your feel for the thing. Mm. Trying to try to get deeper into the feel of the thing. Mm. It's it's intuition. It's mm. it's it's how people respond to into intu- intuition. It's it's what people do when 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 they're inspired. How yes. how, how how people express themselves, yeah. and how many thousand ways there are for them to do it. Mm. How they find another way of doing it, mm. and how it's a real thrill. That's what ordinary people do. That's how they express themselves. You can't beat it. Yeah. <laughs> no, absolutely.